What's up filmmakers, Zach here. In today's video, we're talking about focal lengths, lenses, the best lenses for these things, the talk to cameras. Do you shoot on a wide angle, a medium angle, or like a little bit tighter cinema lens, or like a telephoto? What looks the best, what works the best, and is there a right lens for doing these things? I dive into the technical, the mental, and just personal preferences. So let's start with the first and most common lens, which is this one, 16 to 35 f2.8. Now, if you wanna skip forward to each lens, there will be a little time code that'll get you to each lens and focal length and you wanna jump through it. Personally, I think each focal length that we'll be talking about has a different vibe and flavor, and with each flavor has a different association. There's no one that I would say is king or reigns supreme over another one. They just provide different flavors for the talk to cameras. Let's begin with this one, 16 to 35. Now, 16 millimeter is a very ultra wide angle, and I actually find it kind of difficult to shoot on this in certain spaces because if you're shooting in a location that doesn't look that good, in this one, for example, I had to like arc the camera up, widen the angle, and I had to be like super in front of the lens for this to work and look good. So the 16 millimeter uh, being one of the most common lenses for YouTubers, I find almost sometimes a little bit too wide. But what it does is it creates an obscure angle that's not commonly seen for talk to cameras. When people watch TV or watch movies, Hardly ever do they use a wide angle for the talk to cameras because it's not as flattering. And that means the speaker, whoever's talking, is gonna be having talking really close to a lens. So if you guys are doing like interviews or anything with like a client, 16 millimeter might not be your friend, but shooting on a little bit tighter, like a 35, which we'll talk about, might be a little bit more up your alley. So the 16 millimeter, while it's good for vlogging, and the reason why a lot of vloggers use the 16 millimeter is for a microphone's sake. A lot of us have a microphone on the top of our camera and therefore if you're shooting a 16 mil, the camera's nice and close and therefore so is the microphone. What it does though, it distorts the face, things look kind of wonky and weird. So it's not necessarily the most flattering lens nor is it the most comfortable being, to be in front of but it does show an obscure effect and shows a lot of a space. So if you're filming in a cool space, um, it's quick and dirty and great to capture everything. It's also really good focal length to make sure guaranteed you're in frame. If you don't have a fold out screen, or you don't have a fold out monitor, there's another reason why it's one of the most popular lenses because chances are if you're shooting ultra wide, you're definitely in frame. I know if I'm this close to the lens, I don't need to look at a monitor because I know I like this area is in frame. And so if I go closer, I still know I'm in frame. But if I'm shooting on a tighter lens, I've got to play like the guessing game if I don't have a fold out monitor, or I'm gonna be doing the whole like looking up at the monitor the entire time. So this is where the 16 millimeter reigns supreme. Personally, I don't think it has the best look for doing toxic cameras. Uh, I think it looks a little bit too obscure, but there is sort of the emotional attachment that audience members have now to vloggers and gives it almost a little bit more of an intimate flavor. So for feeling purposes, if you want your video to feel a little bit more like vlog or talk to camera or internet style, the 16 millimeter is awesome. But now let's jump to the 35 millimeter, which I think is gonna give you a little bit more of that cinematic comfort that we're all used to seeing. I actually think this is probably one of the best focal lengths for doing the YouTube talk to camera stuff. The reason why is because the camera plays at a distance that's not too far away. It doesn't feel too vicarious. It doesn't feel too cinematic, which you might start to feel with the 50 millimeter. But this one, you know the camera still has a bit of closeness. It actually feels like the same focal length that you would have if you're talking to a person. You're sort of getting the waist up. You're also getting a nice distance, so I'm not like super in your face and look like a bug. So I would actually say if you're doing YouTube talk to camera stuff or even interview style that you want to feel a little bit more personal, realistic, and comfortable, I think this is a great distance. Now your talk to camera person who, or if you're doing, if you're filming someone, or if you're doing these vlogs, this camera's still pretty close. It's probably about three feet away from me. So it's not super duper distant. It's not awkward or weird for me to talk to, but if you do have someone who still feels a little bit more uncomfortable, maybe you want the camera a little bit further away. Personally, I feel that this distance makes it feel like I'm actually talking to a person and not talking to something that someone's like right in my face. So even as talent on screen, it has a certain comfort to it. 
So with this distance, with this camera uh, and this focal length, I think this is probably one of your best for talk to cameras for YouTube. And it's actually one of the most common when it comes to the tutorials at the table. The talk to camera is a little bit more cinematic style and it's less vlog. And you can also bang it out with your 16 to 35 millimeter lens if by chance you bought one. So uh, it's versatile, it's good and it's great. But uh, it's not my favorite looking one. We're about to hop into my favorite looking talk to camera setup, which is a 50 millimeter, which is a lot more cinematic. Personally, this is one of my favorite cinematic styles. If I'm ever shooting a movie and I'm doing a talk to camera sequence, probably I'll be shooting it on a 50 millimeter. I think it's the most flattering for people on screen. It's also distant enough so that people don't feel like the camera's in their face. Now, as a talent on screen, talking to camera, feels a lot more distant. I feel that I need to project a lot more and talk a lot louder um, because the camera is so distant, even though I'm wearing a lap. But that's sort of the feeling of it. So if you are curious to why maybe people might be projecting more on a wider or a tighter lens further away, that's probably because that's the way it feels. So from that aspect, that's how it feels. Technically, I think that this lens is the best looking one out of all of them. I love what it does with the background. It compresses the frame enough so you're getting a, a little bit of distortion, but it's putting more into the background and making it feel a lot richer. The problem that I was having with the wide angles, it was showing almost too much and I had to like do some awkward framing so you didn't see my ugly basement. For this, it's actually a lot easier to like make a shot in a big space because you can really narrow in what your background that you want. And if you don't have a big background space or you're set, you don't have the YouTube studio that you've always wanted, shooting on a tighter lens can help you with that because therefore you don't have to put as much stuff. You don't have to build as big of a set. Those who can afford the big sets will shoot on bigger lenses and wider lenses. And those who can't, shoot on a tighter lens. And that cuts across through cinema too. If I'm shooting an indie movie and the location I've gone to isn't that great, I'll throw on an 85 millimeter or I'll throw on a 50 millimeter. And the same goes for talk to cameras. If the background just isn't doing it for me, I'll throw on that 50 millimeter and immediately it looks great automatically because it's a 50 millimeter. And two, I don't have to worry about dressing the entire background frame. So for cutting corners and actually just getting a beautiful image always, this is the best lens. As far as people's faces, I think the 50 millimeter is one of the best looking ones. You're not getting a weird distortion. And I actually talk more about this in another premium beat video that I've made, which I'll provide in the links in below, which talks about all different lenses and my personal opinions. But for talk to camera, this is sort of the, the movie or the interview style one that you'll see most common. And I think it has the cleanest and most cinematic look. But just for fun, let's throw in a telephoto, let's throw in an 85 and talk about what that feels like and looks like. So let's swap on over. So this is shot on an 85 millimeter. The camera is so crazy far away. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I have to yell to you guys. Is, is this, is this not ridiculous? Does this feel ridiculous? It looks ridiculous for me. It's like the camera is on the other corner of the room. I literally had to move chairs and push stuff out of the way just so I could get this. Um, this is probably one of the worst focal lengths to film for like YouTube talk to cameras for so many reasons. One, the camera is crazy far. Two, you have to have a super large room to do it. Three, I think it feels this way. It feels like you're shooting almost like on a telephoto, like you're vicariously watching someone. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think of this lens, along with all of the other focal lengths. As much as I love the 85 millimeter and telephoto lenses, and I think they're really good for filming like either behind the scenes, you don't want to step on people's toes, or you just want like a really nice, beautiful image. Long lenses for anything from a 70 to 200 millimeter always looks great, nature, documentary, that sort of stuff. For the talk to camera stuff, um, I don't think it works talk to directly camera because it feels so distant. And if you want a proper performance from someone who is talking to camera, it just, this feels so awkward and ridiculous. And I think it probably looks ridiculous too. So, um, but if you are shooting like B camera and you want, uh, let's say you're doing an interview and someone's talking, you want to get like that nice side shot, the 85 millimeter is great for that or detail shots of people's hands moving. Or if you want to shoot tighter, so it's like just someone's head, that also works. But for to doing like waist up, talk to camera, YouTube videos um, or vlog, blog or anything, this type of focal length is, is inconvenient. 
what my personal thoughts are. So um, hopefully that gives you the full wide range of angles, everything from the super wide to the super close, uh, and gives you a bit of a, a glance into this crazy world of lenses and talk to cameras. I know for when I shoot these things, I start to wonder like, whoa, what's like the best focal length? Um, so from top to bottom, I would say the 35 millimeter is the best for doing YouTube stuff. It's not too close, it's not too wide. Um, the 50 millimeter is definitely the shot that I think stands out the most, is looking the cleanest, the richest, and the most, um, I'd say, one we're familiar with. And then the one that I think is like, makes people feel like they're watching a YouTube video of vlog and works kind of like as run and gun on the go, if you're holding it, is obviously that 16 millimeter. But if you want to try doing something ridiculous and something that stands out from the entire crowd, the 85 millimeter, mm, that's a great, I don't know, you're like, I just wanna be unique and shoot stuff that feels like I'm speaking in a theater. Like I literally feel like I'm I'm like back in high school drama class and talking to like an auditorium and I have to like yell at it. Like if I were to speak to you like you were a person, I would be speaking to you at this level. I'm sorry I'm like totally crapping on the 85 millimeter, but this is by far the weirdest YouTube setup I've ever done. I'm switching back to uh, the 50 millimeter because I like that one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. If you guys would like to learn more, read more, hear more about movie making and tutorials and stuff, you guys can take a look at the Premium Beat blog post, which I've attached in the description below. It talks about everything about this video and more, some incredible uh, articles written by some of the top filmmakers out there. Uh, check it out, the beat down below, uh, along with all of the music and write-ups and everything about this video down there. Uh, and if you like the content that we're creating, and like to see it, maybe just like a pinch more, a little bit like a dash of this stuff more often, um, you can do the thing that a lot of people do on YouTube, which is there's buttons to press, but I'm not gonna force you to do those. So with all that being said, Thanks for tuning in, happy shooting, and just for fun, why don't you guys just try shooting a vlog on a 200 millimeter and write that down in the comment section below and I will personally send you a video back. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you if I'd shoot it also on a 200 mil, but I'll send you, I promise I'll shoot, shoot you a video back. So that's it. Um, yeah, 